next comes uh, uh, two principles that go together, distraction and agency in the great indifference. Agency in the great indifference suggests that there is no God in the universe, that we're kind of on our own. We, are, we, under, we understand to a, a greater or lesser degree um, how we became what we are through the process of evolution. We're still working on the abiogenesis, how we came about, um, but I think we're, I think we're getting close. Um, the universe seems to be ripe with organic molecules, lots of energy, um, and all we need is the opportunity of the of an appropriate planet at a good distance in the Goldilocks zone for water to be in its three states, namely its liquid state. And with enough time, it seems that life might appear. Well, I think we're going to find out maybe that life is more readily uh, uh, able to develop than, than we might imagine, maybe even on other worlds within our solar system. No point is, doesn't seem that we need any external agency to make this happen. No God needed, as Laplace told the, uh, the emperor of the emperor when he asked why uh, there was no God in his model of the universe. And Laplace said, um, um, Sir, it works just fine without it, without that hypothesis. So if that's the case, then that's what I call the great indifference, the seeming emptiness out there. We, we don't want to see that. A lot of us don't. I'm fine with it now. Um, but a lot of us don't want to see it. Go alone long enough and you become fine with it. Um, it's like uh, you get by. I mean, if you, you, you get by. You move on. You know, some people are raised and they don't have a, a parent figure, or maybe one or more, or both parents. I mean, my friend uh, Eddie Collins, uh, Graydon Square, was um, raised that way. And boy, what a fine human being he turned out to be. He was able to get by without that hypothesis. You know, I'm just using that as an example. And some people do. You get by, you kind of realize, I, I was about 16 when I realized, oh, there is no God. That's just, just a, this is just, I didn't call it a hypothesis. This is just, I literally said, this is something people made up to provide easy answers and explanations and to, to get out of jail free card, so to speak, and uh, help you to sleep at night thing, <laughs> scheme. I think I called that back then when I, when I became, when I dropped out of Christianity. And I was fine with it at that point. I was like, well, okay, I'm on my own. Um, we all are, and I'll just, I'll find my way, and I have. And Eddie Graydon um, found his way, despite the fact that he didn't have the blessing of a family, the blessing of a family. <laughs> he didn't have the benefit of a family. He didn't have, that's a strange word to use, blessing. I guess it is a blessing in a way. I mean, I think part of the reason that Graydon got by so well is that uh, his keen intellect and resolve and resiliency, mostly his incredible mind that was able to uh, see the, the, see the, see, see to the infrastructure of values that help to make a good life and, you know, bring those values to him, create a superstructure around himself, despite the fact that he didn't have a mom and dad to, um, you know, put those before him. Incredible, incredible feat. Great man. Anyway, I'm still, every time I think about him, I'm just kind of blown away. Anyway, <laughs> this principle, which I seem to be lingering long on, of uh, you know, agency and the great indifference, when we reach that point that we realize that um, there is no God and that we're on our own, um, that, well, there's two things that can happen. One, we, we, before we get to that point, we can la, 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 la. <laughs> we can start to cover our ears and keep ourselves busy so that we don't have to face that. That's what that's the distraction part. You know, we keep ourselves busy with work and home and family and hobbies and sports and religion and uh, uh, prayers and all that stuff. Just la, 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 all the way to the end. Going alone means uh, not doing that. But going out to get away from the distraction and witness the awful indifference. And then 
Make something of that. Live well with that fact. I almost said in spite of that fact. But it's not a bad thing. <laughs> it's, an, it's an indifferent thing. So I guess there's no in spite of. There's just um, in, with the fact. That is the ambition of seeing the great indifference, of apprehending the great indifference. It's just something you don't really see. It's more something you, you it's, like, it's, like, it's like discovering emptiness, right? You can't see the emptiness. You just, you see the empty vacuum, so to speak. That's what it feels like. It's like, it's like going out and, and being, you go out deep into the desert. It's got to be a moon, moonscape, you know, like almost no plants, nothing. Over that last mountain, well beyond, you can't hear anything. No planes overhead, nothing. Go far enough, you know, to the point that you're kind of lost. You, you can't, you know that you maybe you went, went a little too far. Do you have enough water to get back? Do you, you know, what would happen if you, if you stumbled and hurt yourself? Does anybody know where you are? Preferably not. Be careful if you do this because it's dangerous. But that's what I did. And then you get out there and suddenly you're like, wow, there's this like vacuum out there, this emptiness, you know, this void without God. Because God is just the, God is, is filled in in, in in society and community. It's filled in with the everyday minutia of life. All the things that attract me, my books on the shelves, my letters over there, my family in the rooms, my co-workers, the people on the roads, all that stuff. The dogs are right there. Birds chirping, planes overhead, the car driving past on the road. All that stuff just, it's like that white noise fills it all in. You know, and it says animation, purpose, you know, sentience, it's all out there. When you get deep enough into a desert, and you, you see past that, and you realize, that's all behind me now. What's out there? Beyond, behind all of that. Occupying the vast, vast. <laughs> it's, where we are is so infinitesimally small that it's, I can't even find the word to describe just how much of the universe seems to be, uh, you know, a void of, a void of, with, without sentience, without caring, without uh, love or direction or guidance, just 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 raw energy, energy and matter, in motion through time. Once you see that enough, and you see that, and you're like, well, okay. Well, I'm not going to hang out in this because that's nothing. There's <laughs> it's not much out there. I mean, you can you can have some deep thoughts for a little bit, but eventually. To have a meaningful life, we roll up the sleeves and head back, back to our community and our home and our family and our job and our challenges and our responsibilities. In spite of the great indifference, it's not a life of despair or giving up or futility. It's a life of deliberate forward motion and love and you know, immediacy in spite of the great indifference. That's the punchline of going alone. It's all about coming back. It's all about coming home.